underdog, use promo code ALARM. They'll match you up to 100 bucks. <laughs> I have a cup for Cooper <laughs> Cup, I guess. Make sure you, when you're at the Cheesecake Factory, instead of paying a tip, just write ALARM in there. I can't, I, I'm like MacGyver with running back. Yeah, that's pretty true. That's true. And yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm getting word. You might get Joe Burrow in here. And go! No, I'm not drafting anyone at all. I'm not going to, so quit asking. I've got information, man. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got information for you, man or woman, because week one is this Sunday, but we did have a football game yesterday. We are going to talk about it as well as everything else from Sunday and Monday that is about to happen. It is lightning round powered by fantasy alarm. I am Kevin Tompkins to my right on the screen, Britt Flynn with her brand new setup below her, Gary Haddow live from an undisclosed location in a bunker somewhere in the Pacific Northwest to uh, right below me, Mr. Andrew Cooper, uh, the king of the Chinese finger trap. How is everybody doing? Phenomenal. Doing fantastic, man. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, Rugula. We doing our Jim Rome impressions? <laughs> Let's go. Gary, to Brad Gary, in La Jolla. Gary, what are you? Where are you? I'm in a closet somewhere. I got lost. <laughs> I got lost. Well, There's a lot of children in our apartment complex, and apparently you can hear them through the windows. So uh, we had to we had to improvise. So oh, I actually okay. have a hot water heater next to me. So we'll see how this goes. Acoustics are kind of nice in there, though. Like you sound phenomenal. The dulcet well, tones you. of Gary Hatto. I think you look phenomenal, Coop. All <gasps> three of you. Stop it, dude. Me, <laughs> this old thing. Do you like like? When I go f- like full X Files on you, <laughs> just disappearing. How's that? I actually I got a bit of a sunburn today. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the settings were at before, so we'll figure that out as we go. We will, we will figure that out. But let's figure out uh, some of the uh, football that happened last night. And um, there, I mean, Gary, you're the talk of the town right now. I mean. <laughs> Are you being held against your will? Blink twice. Uh, of course, Mr. Scampers, we love to see you. The most famous uh, uh, cat. show cat in the history of show cats. Um, and uh, Mr. Scampers is grilling in 90 degree weather in the rain. Sounds like you're in uh, Ooh, some kind of very temperate climate. Uh, yeah. So just avoid that rain. So uh, cal, baby. Nervous that's a boss cat. move, dude. In the rain, bro. Uh. No fear. What rain. are you, Scamp? What are you grilling, dude? I want to know what what's on the grill, dude. Chat cat, probably some salmon, maybe. Yeah, S- swordfish, beef and, beef and chicken, some, ahi. some yeah. tender vittles, some. Uh, what are those? Uh, I forget what they're called. The little like grilling up some fancy feast. Yes, <laughs> break me off a piece of that fancy feast. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. Uh, what'd you say, Brett? Coop was on uh, Sirius XM today, by the way. Ooh. I was like, Channel I got on the fancy got sports on the ra- radio. Got on the radio, I was like, yo, sports. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Bring the hot takes. Yeah, oh my lord! Well, let's t- let's talk some football here because we actually had some <laughs> National Football League football last night between the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Los Angeles Rams, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if they were playing a game, a game of football, but uh looked like the Bills' time to shine. So uh, I, I will not say he, he will not, shall not be named. I will not make this into a one uh, Buffalo Bills wide receiver show. But uh, just a little roundtable, your thoughts on the uh, festivities last night, the Buffalo Bills' big win over the Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, man. I'll say, I mean, we can talk about Gabe Davis. He had the snap share that you want, right? F- played every snap at one, Kevin, as you pointed out, the one snap was a kneel down. So virtually played every snap. He, you know, made the most of his five targets, scored a touchdown, caught a bomb, did his best Adam Thielen impression, which is what you wanted from his ADP, right? You wanted to be the second fiddle and get a decent enough target share, play all the snaps, and... um uh, and keep that high touchdown rate because that's going to be the difference maker for this guy, right? Like 
well, you can't say you can't be an Adam Thielen fan like I am and say too many touchdowns and then watch the game that Gabe Davis had yesterday and not be on board with that player. So I before this game, I was the person saying that I'm scared of him at the ADP. We don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know who's going to get the targets. Well, we saw yesterday that he played every snap. In my opinion, he got the second most targets. Zach Moss getting one more target doesn't matter. He's, that's not good. That's not going to happen again. Right. Like it, that doesn't like that. You could say it as a joke that Zach Moss got the second most targets. That, that's not real. Right. Gabe Davis is the second target on the team. And uh, the guy that's dust is Dawson Knox. But we'll talk about him soon, dude. But Gary, uh, how did you feel about Gabe Davis? Are you, are you in? Are you in and on Gabe Davis now? Yeah. I mean, I think that no matter what, Josh Allen just looked amazing. Right. So and if Josh Allen is going to play at this level, then his top two receivers are going to be fire. And we're, they were supposed to be playing against like a really good defense. And I, my favorite stat of the entire night was that Jalen Ramsey gave up a perfect quarterback rating when he was targeted. Like I, I, it's just, Oh, it's just so awesome to see. And so, you know, even if they go against tougher defenses, we just saw a tough defense and Josh Allen, Josh Allen looked like the best quarterback I've seen in quite a long time. He just he was on the money on everything and for the most part. So if, if Gabe Davis is going to be the number two there, then heck yeah. And man, if yeah, there will be games where he's going to be the number one, and you're just going to be so happy. I I don't see a world where you can sit Gabe Davis in any single week moving forward. Yeah. So I don't want to be a wet blanket on this whole conversation, but. I mean, the coverage on Davis looked really, really bad. There was a lot of blown coverage. There were a lot of missed assignments and a lot of just straight up clocking out and like, just I'm done. I mean, we saw that Cam Akers like business decision that happened. Um, Whoever was covering Gabe Davis just completely, I mean, was like, nope, hands off. You know, so although he did have a really great game, I don't, I'm not ready to just like fly all the flags yet. You know, like it is only week one kind of temper expectations going down because we've historically seen that defenses don't look great in week one because they don't get to tackle in practice. They don't, they need those reps. And so it'll take the first couple of weeks for the reps to actually like get going. Although I will say there was a Gabe Davis celebration in this house. Cause as you guys know, Sellers is a huge Gabe Davis truther and the, Roof was coming off the ceiling last night. So <laughs> that said. Yeah, it was very encouraging, at least just to, to rip the Band-Aid off right away. And Twitter just absolutely melted down. Uh, I probably had enough of, of a hand in that. But, um, you know, people, there's a lot of touchdown or bust stuff coming from Gabe Davis. And I just want to throw out Michelle Majuk, uh put out a good tweet today about uh, you take away his touchdown. Uh, he still scored almost 13 fantasy points last night. Gabe Davis, only seven wide receivers averaged 13 plus fantasy point uh, games without a touchdown in 2021. And we're talking Cooper cup, Debo Samuel, Deontay Johnson, Keenan Allen, Jefferson Godwin and Devonte Adams. So, um, you know, he, I don't think he's touched on or bust at all. Um, yeah, sometimes football it, fantasy is just simple. Like the guy, the second, the second target, on an offense quarterback by Josh Allen. Like you want, yeah. you want every, we're drafting Isaiah McKenzie in like almost the ninth and 10th round. I mean, trying to find pieces of this offense. It's like the chiefs offense where you want to try to find pieces of high powered offenses. You know, if you can get them at a bit of a re- reduced cost, cool. Gabe Davis really wasn't the reduced cost, but it still had a profile that you like. I mean, that Coop was talking about it pretty much all, off season where why draft, uh, you know, Gabe Davis hoping he's Adam Thielen when he could draft Adam Thielen, but you know, Gabe Davis showed he's going to be playing in this offense, you know, running hundred percent of routes, you know, virtually every snap minus a kneel down. So, uh, the yeah. big move would be if you drafted Gabe Davis and Adam Thielen, especially in half PPR or standard where, you know, that's the play dude. And, and the big thing for Davis is it's not, like, it wasn't just about his own snap share or about his own targets. Like, Isaiah McKenzie didn't even play 50% of the snaps, right? Yeah. Uh, Dawson Knox was asked to block on seven of his pass plays. Seven of 32 for last plays is 21%. There, there's only been one tight end 
to finish top five while blocking on more than 15% of his past plays over the last like 10 years. And that's Gary's own George Kittle, who is a unicorn tight end. Like the year that the year that George Kittle did it, he had two 80 plus yard touchdowns. Like it's just, it's a statistic you don't want to chase. So Dawson Knox to me is a guy that, you know, we, we got a lot of answers. Dawson Knox probably got to be out on uh, Gabe Davis got to be in on Isaiah McKenzie. Ah, I didn't really play a whole lot there. So, yeah, same with Jameson Crowder too, because it seemed like Jameson Crowder was gonna is gonna be the zone beater, um, you know, like he's always been, and then Isaiah McKenzie's gonna be the man beater. That's like just that's kind of that yin and yang. And so when you're splitting that role, I mean, nobody's gonna be good. I mean, that's those are like better and best ball types where you don't have to set a lineup. You don't have to choose whether or not you want to put them in a lineup. So I think it's going to be really tough to, to trust either of those guys. I mean, Josh Allen, they would, he only threw the ball 31 times. That's probably going to be one of the lowest pass attempt games that he has all yeah. season. I would guess like this game was just such a, a bill sided no, no. affair that if, in, in a competitive game, I mean, what the most recent competitive game we saw, which happens to be the best game of all time. I mean, we, we <laughs> yeah. saw what can happen, right? So get a better opponent and we'll see what happens and the best and, the best game of all time you're talking about when the patriots beat the falcons in the super bowl came back do my wife and i were talking about this last time and she was like wait came you keep saying this is the best game and then you say this and i was like best super bowl best game i don't know what to tell you so it came down came back from 28 three <laughs> <Super Bowl. laughs> i was wearing a i was at a party um i was the only person in a falcons jersey by the way i had my Deion sanders uh jersey on the red Falcons jersey. Everybody else was they're all Eagles fans mostly, so didn't really matter. But yeah. Anyway, um, let's switch over to the Rams real quick. Uh the Odyssey that is Cam Akers. Um not great, Bob. I mean, just it's it's the Darrell Henderson show at this point. Well, and then you talk about like Kieran Williams getting hurt on top of it. And then instead of even letting Cam Akers take those snaps, they brought in like their punt returner to do snaps. Yeah. Like that's how much in the day Random dog Powell. he is. Yes. Like it does not look good for Akers. And I don't know if that's because he's still dealing with a little bit of that soft tissue injury that we heard about in the off season. If it's because he's just not explosive anymore because of his Achilles or because of his lack of effort, because we did see a couple of missed assignments when he was supposed to run block word pass block and i don't know just did not look good not great bob would you uh we had this we did this question earlier today on the uh better sports network 7 to 10 a.m that we do would you rather be kieran williams and get hurt before you even touch the football or would you rather be james cook and to fumble your one and only carry when james cook fumbled i definitely was like Maybe this is going to be the next Kareem Hunt. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. That Kareem Hunt did do that, and then he had like an amazing epic game after that. Still, so but clearly that did not happen. Yeah, I not quite the same. Yeah. The amount of just, I mean, Britt said it. Like everybody, slow your roll. Like it's one game. It's really tough seeing this stuff, and it's you know, Acres coming off of his injury. The Bills offense looks great. I don't know if Cook is all of a sudden just going to be benched long term. And then we are, I'm assuming we're about to get to him, but like Allen Robinson, I mean, yep. it makes you pretty damn nervous. The The most recent thing that I saw about Allen Robinson is only his two targets with Stafford said they were playing a ton of uh, zone. And so he kept getting covered two up against the, the sideline and therefore he just wasn't going to look for him. I don't know. It feels like a good, good excuse feels like still terrifying everyone's been burned by robinson lately so I, i'm excited for week two to see both these teams and see what is actually true and get the uh at least a second data point to to start seeing lines well and then sean mcveigh comes in today and he's like yeah we'd really like to get robinson more involved and it's like you think like what are you talking about like when you're that one-dimensional of course the game isn't going to go well for you you know it's just so I'm not panicking yet on Robinson, but it definitely is not a great start. Yeah. And then he had Tyler Higby channeling his uh 2021 Amonra St. Brown with 11 targets, uh, mo a lot of them at the end of the game. And Ben, I mean, in a world such as this where Ben Skoranek gets six targets and then you know, Tutu Atwell was even getting involved. Um, 
not great. But yeah, it'll be great to get that second data point for sure. Um, also, Cooper Cup is still Cooper Cup. So I don't think we have to worry about anything regarding him. So anything else before we uh, hop into week one stuff or further week one stuff, I should say. Yeah, that's most important. We got that's it. it. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, let's uh, what we'll do here. These strategy sessions uh, each week is that we will talk about a player or situation that we are excited to see in week one. Uh player situation that we're nervous to talk about in week one or I'm um, nervous to nervous about in week one, not to talk about because none of us are nervous about talking about anything. Uh, and then a question that we want answered about a player situation in uh, a particular week. So we'll start with the good, uh, go to the bad, and then we will uh, go to the, the question. We'll, we'll do a little pondering. So Brett, we'll start with you. Uh, one player or situated that you're excited to see. Uh, what piques your interest? What uh, what has you jazzed up about week one? Is it any surprise to anyone who has watched this show or seen me on Twitter? Or go, um, it's Traylon Burks for me. Like, of course, it's Burks. We, you know, we got all this hype in the preseason about him not doing well about this and that he's not getting targets he's working with like all the second and third teamers this guy gets to go up against Aaron Robinson I don't know if he's related to Allen Robinson or not but Aaron Robinson <laughs> this guy ranked 141st in coverage grade by PFF last season like this guy absolutely stinks should not be on an NFL team at all and I think that Burks is going to show all the doubters wrong and I cannot wait. It's the afternoon game. So we'll all be a little socially lubricated by then. It's going to be awesome to get to see Burks in a uniform with the actual starting quarterback throwing him the ball. So I don't know. What about you guys? Excited for it. I mean, I, this is where we get to see who is the, off season like fade that everything we you're supposed to should have just faded the noise right and you know I, you got to be nervous like it's a 50 50 shot if i, I want to know like what that line is that burks comes out and you feel comfortable like three for 50 are you comfortable does it need to be four for 80 like where is the line where you were saying no they were wrong and where is the line is saying oh shit they were right i i have no idea I think, I mean, they set his line at 25 and a half on his receiving prop. So I would say around 50, that pretty much like, okay, we're on a good start. That's where we're going. And it'll yep. go up from there. And I think against this matchup and this coverage, he could like go over his target prop or his yardage prop, like with one catch. Yeah. <laughs> like he could totally do it. Definitely. I think Coop, you're on you're mute. Muted. I have Burks in a bunch of best ball leagues and a bunch of uh, high stakes leagues. So I'm definitely rooting for Burks. But at the same oh, time, because I think we made you draft him. I, have, I, I had a bunch of Burks already. I don't, I, there was no situation where I was forced to draft Burks. I love Burks. I love Britt Flynn. I love Chris Sellers and uh, I love America. So of course I'm going to have <laughs> Burks on quite a number of teams. And I do not appreciate that slander. Not here, not on my timeline and not ever. Uh, but what I was getting to there is that I am, because of what I do for a living here, I am contractually obligated whenever there is a undetermined target totem pole to root for the tight end in this situation. So I guess I have to be out on Robert Woods because I do want to see Austin Hooper come out and, and make a little noise. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like I got to pull for the I got to pull for my boys, the inline, the inline guys grinding out. So uh you know, I do have a little Robert Woods too, but it would be nice if it was Traylon Burks and Austin Hooper and Robert Woods was just like doing that thing he does where he just blocks really well on run plays, you know? So could happen. That would be beautiful. Yeah. Be nice to see the, uh, little Austin, the hoop troop, if you will, uh, yeah. get, get going. But the only thing that worries me about this entire game, just Todd Downing, uh, offensive court. I mean, that's just, very, very slow paced, very, I mean, the over under of this game is 43 and a half. Like I, I would, if I were betting man, I would be putting a hard under on this game. I feel like it's going to be like, a, it seems like one of those 10, 
six games to me. Like just two offenses that just I mean Daniel Jones hoop troop damn right. That was that was I don't know if that's a thing or if it it, if it is we it just a thing? made it a okay. thing. Well, I mean I don't know if I just like made that up in my half consciousness, but um, yeah, I mean if I'm gonna bet on anybody in this offense, I guess in the passing game, if I'm gonna play anybody, I'm gonna take a shot on Traylon Burks, and it's probably gonna be in DFS. It's not gonna be in a in a managed league, but um, yeah, I mean that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping is. Traylon Burks just asserts himself right away, shows as shows that he's the top target in the offense, and then you kind of go from there and hope that he can build on that. So I just definitely, wanted to add. I just yeah, have to add. The Titans are going to put up points. They're going to crush them. It's not going to be a 10 to 6 game. I think they're just going to stomp them. And we're going to see King Henry get back. We're going to see I mean Tannehill's good, like especially with a real tight end. When was the last time they had a real tight end? I, I don't think that Walker was there if we can consider him one at the time with, with Tannehill. So this is going to be the first time when they're not like Jeff yes. Swain and whoever Ferk else. Dad, bro. I think Ferks are. Ferks are, right? Ferk, so, Ferk daddy, baby. Yeah, Johnny I love Smith. for this week. Johnny Smith is good. Okay, fair enough. But was I, keyword. Johnny Smith is good at blocking and he's good versus Owen, but he's not good versus man-to-man. Hooper is good versus man-to-man. Ryan Tannehill not only said that He's impressed by his route running, but he also said that he learned uh, some things from Austin Hooper, which I was like, okay, this is a wide receiver that plays quarterback. So it's pretty easy to teach him stuff, but yeah, uh, I mean, (laughs) they are, they do need a wide receiver. Have they considered moving Ryan Tannehill, the receiver and let Malik Willis play? I mean, dude, he'd probably be nice. He could be this. He could be our generation's Terrell Pryor, bro. Right. (laughs) But, But he was, he could be like a, if, like reverse Edelman. That's what he kind of <laughs> reverse Edelman. I love it. Gary, what about you? What is uh, one player situation you're excited about in uh, for week one? I'll try to keep it short and just say the Saints offense. Uh, I've been super high on Jameis Winston all offseason. I mean, we saw what he did before he tore his ACL and was just on uh, a, a personal record pace. I don't know what the right thing is to say with, with his touchdowns to interception ratio. And that was with terrible wide receivers. And now we get to see Michael Thomas potentially coming back. Chris Olave, who a lot of people have as their top rookie wide receiver, and he looks awesome. They brought in Jarvis Landry. Those three are going to be amazing. Alvin Kamara is not currently suspended, so he's going to be there. I It's going to be fun to see what these guys do. And when was the last time you saw the Saints without Sean Payton? Like, Sean, no Sean Payton, no Drew Brees. Like, this is just an entirely different team. It's going to be really exciting to see what happens. So I, I'm here for it. And Personally, I think Jameis is going to be the smash QB that everybody's frustrated that they didn't take last year. And everyone's terrified to have him be their starting quarterback, despite the fact that he's going to put like three to five touchdowns up like on a majority of weeks. Gary, I have money on Jameis Winston to lead the league in passing yards at his prop bet. Yeah. I don't really bet that often, but when I do, I bet on Jameis Winston. Now, I, when I do, I, I, I didn't have to put that much money down. 20 bucks. So his odds to lead the league in passing yards is plus 2,600. So That's 20, good. if you, if you throw it on 20 yeah. bucks, you win 500 bucks. And yeah. he led the league in passing yards in 2019. Like he's done it. He's done this. He threw for 5,000 yards in a 16 game season. He has Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, uh, Alvin Kamara, a bunch of weirdo tight ends, Adam Trotman, Taysom Hill, whatever he's up to. Uh, Juwan Johnson, first week one megastar last year. Um, you Nick Fanette, baby. Host type sleeper, Marcus Mar- Calloway. Marcus Calloway, dude. <laughs> Traquan Smith might be floating around over there. You know what I mean? I don't know. I like Deontay it. Hardy. Deontay we'll Hardy. Dude. the entire depth chart. Yeah, whatever Deontay Hardy wants to call himself this year. Deontay Harris, Deontay Hardy. Uh, monster kick return superstar. So, And the, the thing about passing yard total bets is that pick, six, pick sixes, dude, you get the ball right back, baby. You start, yep. sling, you start slinging it again. So that, I'm in. that's old Winston, man. Yeah, and this... I don't think that's Winston anymore. New eyes, new eyes, new legs can't yeah, lose. New eyes, full hearts can't lose. Yep. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's and I go. Mean, <laughs> this uh this matchup with the Falcons too is just a really good way to kind of ease into the season and like get some actual game time reps with all these new receivers. Because I think the Falcons are ranked 32nd 
in fantasy defense. I mean, they are going to be atrocious. And so what you were going to say something, Gary, just if for DFS purposes, AJ Terrell is amazing shutdown awesome. corner for the Falcons. If he's going to be on a lot or if he's going to be on Michael Thomas, it's going to be a tough day for them. If he's shadows Landry, baby. Yeah. It's, that's, that's the point. Like there are so many good receivers on this team. Like, Whichever one he shadows, whatever you still have, like two studs. Yeah, it's gonna it, and then Kamara, so it's gonna be a super exciting game. I'm all on the Jameis Winston train. I have been. I'm with you. Like I want to see this redemption, man. I wanted to see it last season, and then he tore his ACL. Man, it's happening this year. Let's go. The beautiful yeah. thing about the beautiful thing about it is that Alvin Kamara has never had a thousand rushing yards. It's usually passing, so like he gets all those stats. Winston does. Yep. Yep. He do. do. If we, if we could play the Scott my Scott Fishbowl lineup just through hype and talk, and can we do that instead of the actual playing of games? Because he's my QB too, and um, just put all this positive energy into the uh, atmosphere, please. Um, yeah, I mean, from what I see, Jarvis Landry's going against uh, Isaiah Oliver, who is just kind of blah as a corner. Um, so that's a very, very good matchup. He's probably going to – Michael Thomas is likely to play. I know it's kind of a game-time decision, but trending on the side of playing. So, um, yeah, I definitely like Landry. Uh, if I'm going to play anybody in the passing game, that's not Alvin Kamara. Uh, so, yeah, the Saints offense, I think that's going to be – it's going to be a fun game, certainly, because I'll be watching that because Kyle Pitts and, you know, I'm not sure about if Drake London's even going to play. Uh, Cause he is questionable heading into week one. So it might be the Kyle Pitt show um, or they could just bracket him and not let him do a damn thing. It's possible, but it is what it is. At least the, the saints will be damn entertaining. Uh, at least more entertaining now than, you know, to talk about the Drew, Drew Brees, New Orleans saints uh, coop. What about you, brother? Dude, I'm looking for my man. Rashad Bateman, dude. I wrote the articles on him, talked about him, potted him up. Uh, and I think that the situation is perfect for him to blow up, considering you know everything I said about how they use the extra fullbacks, the extra tight ends. Now they're going to use Isaiah Likely as a second tight end, so you're going to have this double tight end situation where Isaiah Likely could, like, it's so easy to tout him. That's the thing. Everyone's touting him because when he's the tight end 30, if he finishes tight end 20, then you look smart. It's like such, it's the easiest tout of all time, right? But the thing is, uh, you know, he could get like 80 targets or whatever. That means that there's a ton of targets left for the other two dudes. And we had Clifton Brown on the Better Sports Morning Show. He's a beat writer for the Raiders. And I asked him, I said, the Raiders have been a bottom five team in passing under Greg Roman virtually every year. Greg Roman's been bottom five, even going back to the Bills and 49ers. Uh, last year, they were ninth in passing. Where do you think they fall this year? Do you, do you think they fall back to earth? And he said that he doesn't think they're going to fall that far back. He says that if he had to realistically put a spot on, he would say 12th. He said Lamar Jackson wants to prove if he doesn't have a contract, he wants to prove that he can pass the football for this team, for other teams. He has full command of the audibles to change the plays if he wants to. Mm. So this team's going to be slinging. You know what I mean, like, if you want him to, he's got to showcase his skill set. I mean, he wants to win games, but he's got to showcase. So uh, I'm fully on Rashad Bateman. Excited to see what that looks like. Uh, I don't think, I mean, the, the, the beautiful thing about it is that, like, think about Gabe Davis, right? We were kind of talking about the other threats. This team doesn't have any other threats that were even realistically like there's no world where Devin Duvernay comes out of nowhere. And I mean, if Devin Duvernay comes out of nowhere and catches a million passes, then I'll definitely win draft with Giants because I drafted him because he returns <laughs> punts. Right. Like, yeah. uh, so that's where I'm at. Rashad Bateman. I want to see it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not, not I was waiting wants. on Gary. I was waiting on Gary. But yeah, um, I mean, you know, you've got Mark Andrews. You've none of the running backs really are prolific pass catchers, so there's not really going to be a lot of target distribution to them. Mm -hmm. So in between, like Bateman and Andrews, and then maybe likely, but that's it's going to be highly consolidated, really high percentage target shares, and that is exactly what you want to see. I got the thumbs up of approval. Yeah, because that really is what you want to see, though. I mean, dude, they both got a Bateman. Uh, sorry, uh, Andrews and Hollywood both got 150 targets last year and Hollywood's yep. gone. 
I mean, it's sometimes it'd be easy like that, you know? Sometimes fantasy football is just easy. Easy. <laughs> it's, e- it's easy when the narrative you want is, you know, presenting the Rashad Bateman narrative, not the Gabe Davis narrative. But anyway, <laughs> by, by the way, guys, I, I realized what that crinkling sound was. If you guys heard it, it's because I was playing with the finger trap. The finger whole time. trap. I the knew it was be. the finger trap. I knew it. I was just sitting here. I was like, Rashad Bateman. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what are you going to get my fingers on you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys are up. I'm clipping that. <laughs> e, like E.T., like finger trap E.T. E, bait and phone home. You should do like E.T. And E.T. <laughs> we have I, I, I think I just, I think I just saw that seven people left the stream. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, look. This is what our show has become. <laughs> We are a we are a parody of ourselves. Yeah. Well, it's been a long week. We've all been working hard. We're all kind <laughs> of really just basically hallucinating at this point. So yeah, pretty much. I'm just here for the uh, finger trap references. Yeah. Kevin, right. who are you excited for? Who you guys like? <laughs> well, Gary, I wanted I wanted to know what you thought of Rashad Bateman. Oh, I know. I, I I'm had it. I was. I feel like I've always been high on him, but it kind of ebbs and flows because I I kind of just feel like I need to see it with the running back stuff. It, I don't know. Uh, something makes me nervous that the 1,200 and whatever that he could easily get is, is just not going to be there. But I think that's because I'm so high on Mark Andrews that I'm nervous that if Rashad shows up, what happens to Andrews? Because if Andrews ends up at 800 and like six – and you drafted him in the second or third round, you're pretty frustrated, right? And that means, hey, you could somebody else got a steal with Rashad Bateman. I, I, I'd be curious to see if both of them can thrive at the same time. And I know that Coop has, has uh, a very great article that everyone should read about Rashad Bateman and probably has lots of holes that he can poke in everything I just said. But I really like him, but I have actually found that I don't have any of him. It just happened to be where he was going in drafts. And shit, maybe that's just like, coloring even what i'm saying here but I, i'm excited to see what he does especially because i love the comparisons to the aforementioned uh alan robinson or keenan allen and just how versatile he is as a wide receiver well la- true and yeah that's pretty true that's true and yeah last year last year marquise brown got 146 targets and mark andrews got 153 so why can't we all just live in harmony dude Play that Beatles song about like love and friendship. This is this like is said, a life polls, hack right here. By the way, this is a life hack here right here from Dave. Uh, just sign into multiple YouTube accounts. Uh, put it on your computer, your laptop, your big screen TV, Roku, anything, any kind of device, a toaster, your your some of the monitors that are on like refrigerators. Just throw throw lightning round up on there. That's that's what what you gotta do. <laughs> Dave everywhere, dude. Scampers is everywhere. Dame Lightning overboard around everywhere. Wait a second. Dame D- Dame overboard changed their name to Dame Overlord after the <laughs> we made a joke in the chat. I actually said the name wrong. Oh, Dame Overlord. I'm I'm just saying Dame Overlord might be cool than Dame Overboard. That's, that's a fire. That's a fire name change. <laughs> before before I go into my uh player situation, I'm excited about uh josh loyola i have Devonte wide receiver one and waller tight end do i flex jacobs three raiders side face or put brandon cooks i like cooks <sighs> I, i'd probably go cooks just just in case especially because the the chargers defense it feels like every year it's said but the Chargers defense should be a lot better especially now that Bo, bosa has bookend with khalil um khalil max so yeah i think i'm gonna go with cook knowing that that's going to be them coming from behind. I was reading the chat and missed the question. Um, <laughs> good job. Sorry. <laughs> Devontae you guys are so funny, one, dude. <laughs> well, and then do I flex Jacobs, three Raiders, or put in Brandon Cooks? I would it'd be Brandon Cooks. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Cooks, man. Yeah, don't be crazy. I mean, Brandon Cooks, the over-under for like – like so the over-under for Allen Robinson with Vegas was like 800 yards. Everyone should have kind of seen that coming. Over under for Brandon Cooks is like 950. Like once yeah. again, once again, 
I'm asking you to draft Brandon Cooks, dude. I sound like Bernie Sanders. Over Bernie here. Sanders. Like, I once again. <laughs> once again. I please ask you, like, it's it, it doesn't have to be hard. Thousand yards every year. The guy at his age, and like, for guys under tw uh, age 28, 28 and under, or 29 and under, wherever he is now, like, he's like seventh all time. And he, he doesn't even, he doesn't even, his birthday isn't for like three games in the season. He could pass like Antonio Brown and Larry Fitz. Like, this guy is a yardage machine. So get Brandon Cooks in your lineup. Agreed, 100%. Um, and then I'll just get to this real quick. Who could I get if I offered to trade Cam Akers and Miles Sanders to a teammate? Um, you could probably get Kyle Juszczyk. Yeah, like Jeremy McNichols maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's I mean, you're selling incredibly low on Cam Akers. Uh, Miles Sanders is just kind of there. He's carrying, body. He's carrying the water for for. Miles, Sand I like Miles Sanders. I mean, as a player, but he's carrying the water down the goal line so that Jalen Hurts can dunk it. You know, I'd say wait, wait, wait a week or two and see if Akers can at least recoup a little bit of value before you're going to offer likely a fifth round pick and that you'd, when you drafted Akers in a seventh and Sanders, see you know if if one of them if Sanders scores a touchdown or something like that, maybe that'll can can swing it your way. But I wouldn't do anything right now. Um, I'll get to my uh, player situation I'm excited about, which would be uh, Russell Wilson, the Denver offense, uh, going into Seattle, into whatever they call their stadium now. I believe it's Lumen Field or something. Who knows? Gary, you're the Pacific Northwest expert. Is it Lumen Field or did they change it yesterday and I didn't catch it? I don't care. They should burn. Boots on the ground. Gary Haddow. That's no, why we have you. All the Seahawks. No, I, I apologize. I have when no I, idea. I, I will be going there in December with the Axel Jansen, though. When I was there, it did. At. The stadium did burn. Like it was on fire when I was there in Denver. Also, Gary, did you see I got into a little dust up with uh, the Seahawks mascot on Twitter? I did. It was what? <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah, I got yeah. a little. Blitz was talking a little smack, but. Yeah. I challenged Blitz to a pie bet, and he didn't. He didn't get back to me. So yeah. a little bit of a chicken bird, if you ask me, dude. <laughs> that was amazing. Eat oh it, my! Eat it, though. Blitz. But yes, I am very excited about uh, the marriage between Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson from the efficiency standpoint. No longer will he be. Uh, will Russell Wilson be under the shackles of Pete Carroll and his fruit stripe gum on the sideline? Um, definitely like the weapons there with Carlton Sutton, Jerry Judy. Um, you know, I mean, clearly he had weapons in Seattle, but uh, just that whole marriage and that offense that won't be in the stone age in Seattle will actually be a modernized, um, efficient offense for Russ Wilson to cook in. So I am very excited to see how that turns out. I think there'll be kind of guns blazing a bit, um, with Russ Wilson trying to prove himself, uh, in the in prime time. Uh, so I am definitely excited about how that Denver offense is going to shape up. Um, I don't think it's going to be, I mean, they won't have, uh, our, our, our lightning round mascot, Greg Dulcich. They will not have him unfortunately mm -hmm. because he is on IR, but you know what? We can still play. Oh, yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Look at that hair. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Anytime you can He's get not it. Lying. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. As someone that does not have hair anymore, it is. It brings a tear to my eye and a just a wistful feeling. Swag. Well, I'm just. I'm not only excited for Russell Wilson in this situation. Like I'm excited for everybody else who's been in that offense. Like everybody is set free. It's like the end of one of those movies where all these animals are in the zoo and then they open the cages and they're like, "You're free. You're free." That's how I feel about this Denver offense right now. Like, they're not held down anymore. It's going to be so beautiful, and I cannot wait. And despite the Monday night matchup, which I think the game's going to be a little blah, we're going to get to see what they can do against a pretty bad defense, so there should be some fireworks on this offense. Yeah, okay. my, take, my, my take is pretty simple. It's basically that, like, Russell Wilson, like, Russell Wilson's Tom Brady, and... You know, the Broncos of the Buccaneers and 
Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like it could <laughs> it could potentially happen. So that finger trap. You're getting grounded from the finger trap. I need to get more finger traps. This one's getting kind of beat up from the finger mm-hmm. trap bits. From trap from trapping. Fingers. It's, yeah, it's yeah, too many traps. This thing is uh about to go into the finger trap hall of fame with a new record. Yeah, is that where where is the finger trap hall of fame, by the way? It's actually in Canton, Ohio. You'd be surprised. It's, <laughs> oh, really? We, well, yeah, we have our we have our. We did not meeting. see signs on the highway for that. We have a meeting at the Dave and Buster's, but it was actually the week after the expo for fantasy football. I hung around all week. It was right next uh, to the big game hunting, I believe. It was, yeah. We yep, to be right at the big game hunting. We all met. We all met at uh, Waffle House <laughs> the morning before. You know, we had our Waffle House hats. Oh my gosh, and, you still have that. Oh, I got all that stuff. Yeah, I got all. I have everything. Everything from the expo I have here with me, like on my person. Oh my! Goodness. By the way, I might have got. I might have searched eBay for that grimace mug. I might be getting one of those. You got it. It has to be the mascot. I dude, if, if you can find it, get like ten of them because I, I need. I need oh, okay. I'll get right on that. I'll get send me. I'll get send me some. Yeah, that won't be a question. I'll get asked, you know, why, uh, Kevin, what's, why do you have 10 Grimace mugs? You know, Aaron's going to look at that and be like, what the hell's going if on? If you, if you buy one, it's not weird, but if you buy 10, then it's like, you kind of got to answer. Yeah. Then like people, the fed sh- show up to your door and be like, what is going on? Exactly. Grimace gang. Oh, um, so let's waffle house, do- waffle house. <laughs> scampers was in the front yard fantasy chat earlier, which I was also in. Dude. I scampers is the undisputed chat goat scampers and Toronto Dave actually both legends. But. Scampers is in every chat in the history of ever. Like it's impressive. It's amazing. I've never been. A, I, there's never been a chat that Mr. Scampers is not in. So let's talk about a player situation that we're uh, maybe not so high on. We're a little nervous about for week one. So I'll, uh, Gary, uh, let's let's go to you, uh, yeah. Mr. Man from an undisclosed location in a bunker somewhere on planet Earth. So mine's pretty simple. George Kittle, you were nervous if you were going to pay the, the pay up to draft him because of his weird injury history calves and shins and whatnot and then all of a sudden on monday he injures his groin he has not practiced all week depending on the site that you're looking at there are some of the sites are like the quote is like not looking good and you're like wait is that for this week is that for long term like what's going on and what are the implications of george kittle being out we won't discuss those other than to say your fantasy team is very frustrated uh, and he's going to be a last minute out, you know, that he's going to be going up to the wire. Then you're going to have to be scrambling to get someone. So Evan Ingram, just to say available in many, a many league right now. So that's kind of my pivot in all my Kittle leagues. I, I just, how long is this going to go for groins in particular at the beginning of the season? I mean, and personally, I feel like you just have to lock that down for like two weeks and just say, we got to get this right. Otherwise you're not going to be the same and they need him to block given Trey Lance and uh, the 49ers offensive line was. Yeah. And there's also a little bit of weather concern in Chicago. I think it's supposed to be rainy. And if it is a little bit bad and they decide to play him, if he slips on that wet grass, just imagine the chances of aggravating it to where he's out for even longer. So I don't think that he actually plays this week. And then depending on the severity of it, like, how long they're being very wishy-washy and secretive about it, but I would not expect anything less from the 49ers. But yes, I am very terrified for that. Yeah, it's a it's a injury that can linger too. That so I'd rather him not play. I'd rather him just not play. Do you guys know yeah. who they signed at tight end in the offseason? Mr. Uh, McAtee's Tyler Croft himself. The uh, baby face Yeah. So they've tra- they've Charlie Werner and then they also have they still have Ross Dwelly. Dwelly. Ross Dwelly I kinda like Dwelly of that group I like Dwelly best for fantasy. If you're throwing a DFS dart throw from downtown. Like, yeah, like Car- like way the Carlton Banks. Downtown. <laughs> like, like way full court. Like, like if you've made a lineup with every viable tight end and you just want to diversify <laughs> even further. Yeah, exactly, Gary. Like dangerous downtown, like <laughs> Like, like people, me trying to throw axes at the Dave and Buster's. If you're throwing that dart, dude, people better people better not be wearing sandals. <laughs> let's just say, yeah, 
for sure. I like how Brit tries to pretend they don't just throw axes around between neighbors and stuff in Arkansas. Like, hey, how you doing? Here's an axe. Yeah, That's like a nice Tuesday in Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually much better at basketball than Brit when we played at, um, at Dave <laughs> Buster's honestly. on offense and defense. Really? I was, be- we, I was better at the food not, part. We will not even go into that flagrant, <laughs> flagrant foul. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, anytime, I was there. That was a fl- yeah, that was a flagrant one. Dude, first of all, dude, <laughs> at, at the YMCA when I play outdoor courts, you know, after school, like cool, that has get, no goddamn jurisdiction. If you get ball first, it's not a foul. That's just that's a block. That's a block, and you got to get out of the way after you get stuff. That's you so need I, five Chinese finger traps. You just needed like just... where I'm from. That was a block. No problem. No. Nope. Anyway, okay. um, well, I guess I will tell. <laughs> our our beautiful public uh what i'm nervous about uh it's everybody's favorite twitter hype machine uh damian pierce going up against some indianapolis colts uh yeah yeah stifle uh on that i'll be stifling the one league that i had damian pierce in um yeah going up against indianapolis i don't know i you know i know shaq leonard is going to be out for this game but i still doesn't i don't think it matters honestly um I just don't think they're going to be throwing him into the wolves right away. Um, you know, Rex Burkhead is going to have a role. I, right now, Damian Pierce looks like a two down grinder against Indianapolis. They're going to be down, I would say, fairly quickly. Um, they added in Yannick and Gockley as well. The Colts defense led the AFC in takeaways in 2021. Um, so I'm firing up Rex Burkhead where I can because I'm just hoping that he can get some late game. Um, dump offs uh, for PPR formats, but Damian Pierce, I think if you're expecting him to just uh, keep that going from the preseason all and all that hype, I think you're going to be very much disappointed. Um, you know, I could probably see 10 to 12 carries, probably like the the Darrell Henderson line, just without the receptions. Like, what was he like 10 for 48 or something like that on the ground? I mean, that's probably his his ceiling. I mean, if he falls in the end zone. You know, anything can happen, but uh, it's not a bet that I want to make. No, he's going to make a lot of people sad. I know one in particular, but I will not mention. The only contrarian play I could say against this is that Shaquille Leonard is going to be out, and I'm curious to see if that makes any difference. I don't know what it will, but from like a DFS perspective, if you're looking for something that's going to be potentially a lower volume, a lower percentage owned. It might be him. Uh, Damian Pierce. In this economy? It is a hype, the hype machine, Damian Pierce. I like that uh, thing is running on like I steam like from like four weeks, like a month ago. Everybody in yeah. there, everybody with a Twitter account is going to be like, I'm sorry, Damian Pierce. And I'm starting <laughs> Isaiah likely. And I'm enough, starting. And then I can George, afford to start. George Chris. Pickens. And I can start afford to start christian mccaffrey like dude if that lineup wins those dudes are gonna be splitting the money seventy five thousand ways dude like mm-hmm. i just the Buying hype, grimace these hype and... machine players dude missed me with that noise <laughs> and DFS, My apologies. Yeah. And i was right if you want if you want it no, no gary you're good give me the adam <laughs> feelings and the amari coopers these well, kids god, god damn it gary you shut up <laughs> no well here's you my your mouth when i'm talking to you but there's you're right, Gary. There, there's two. Well, there's there's two ways it goes. He's either the super chalk play that you have to have in there because because the lines came out when he was crazy cheap. So he's either you either have to have him in there or everyone's gonna have him in there and you want to miss yeah. this. So maybe you make one lineup with him, one lineup without him because there are those. It's week one. You know those money hungry monsters over at DraftKings and FanDuel came out with the 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 pricing like months ago. Right, just to try and get as many games in as possible. So, like, there are some crazy pricing. So, Damian Pierce is cheaper than he probably should be. Still, yeah, but he's going to be so chalky. And oh, the thing okay. is, people don't realize when he was at Florida, he never had over like 600 yards in a season. Like, he That's never he- had like over X amount of carries in a season. He's never proven that he can be the workhorse back. So, why in the world would he all of a sudden? be the guy on a bad offense with a bad offensive line who's going to be playing from behind in a ton of games. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, that's my soapbox. 
I need to re-upload the makes no sense at all. Coop, you're going to have to send me that because I, I was will. about to play that. And then I realized we didn't have that. Why isn't it in there? Oh, we took it out for copyright reasons. Yeah. Let them come for us. I, yeah. Come come on. Come get us, Chumbawamba or whoever. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mark Hoppus. Yeah. It would so, be yeah, him. I think, I think we'll be fine with that one. Coop, what about you? A player that I'm nervous about, dude. Player uh, or situation that you're nervous about for week one. Yeah, so the one that that I've become quite nervous about is Adam Thielen, man. There he is, dude. What's up, brother? Can't hear. I did not even see him. He was hiding behind the coats. I'm worried about about Adam Thielen for a couple reasons, dude. One is that like the Vegas lines aren't that good on him. Like normally, like everything, everything is poised for him to do what he typically does, which is be a one of the top two targets on the team. But it is a new offense. Makes you a little nervous there, right? So we got we got new offense. Like if it, everything goes the way it's been, he's been a wide receiver one, right? But we have new offense, right? Then we have age. We have touchdown dependency. And then uh, Edwin Poritz, uh, who's a very sharp uh, medical fantasy football analyst. He's a uh, personal – he's a trainer – uh, he mentioned that the that Thielen, where well, I thought he just had a rolled ankle, he I like D Kev after we did the pros of Joe's, I like damned him. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, surgically repaired ankle business here with Thielen. I thought he just had a rolled <laughs> ankle. Apparently, he has like a piece of metal on his ankle now. Uh, so not super cool on that front. So I am a little worried about Thielen. I've been touting Thielen. I've been drafting him everywhere. We are. Yeah, going you to, have. We're going to windmill dunk on everybody when he does score a touchdown but there's a possibility that he isn't 100 percent if you know he is playing with like metal on his foot or whatever they say so i am a little nervous there we'll have to see what happens but he was also like wide receiver 30 so who cares you know what i mean like wide receiver three in your lineup not a big deal probably be better than gabe davis remember that time whoa whoa shots fired probably. remember that time we took adam Thielen over dk metcalf I mean, dude, DK Metcalf is catching balls from Geno Smith, so not crazy. I mean, Hunter Renfro was a better if, – if we were playing wide receivers in a vacuum, no one would ever draft Hunter Renfro over DK Metcalf, but Hunter Renfro was a wide receiver one last year, and DK Metcalf was a wide receiver – so. Like, if this were a schoolyard and you're pay, you're picking, like, pro, you know, you're picking a team, Hunter Renfro would be the last pick. Right, Him or dude. Cooper Cup would be, like, the la- two last picks. Right. That's like that's like, you know, it's that's like some goodwill hunting stuff picking Hunter Renfro. Yeah, like give me the janitor. You know, give me Vince Vince Papali would go before (laughs) Hunter Renfro. Right. Yeah. I'll take Rudy might go before I'll take Curly Q over there. Yeah. Like no chance, dude. You're definitely taking DK Metcalf. Dude looks like he dude looks like he eats like glass for breakfast. That guy is like cut, dude. Would you rather have um I'm not trying to be tasteless, but would you rather have Isaiah Peed? Who I believe has one one leg. <laughs> chat, chat is oh mixed. God. The chat is mixed, mixed on my opinions this evening. I just <laughs> I'm getting canceled tonight. Axel, this has finally, been a great Axel finally run showed with everybody. Up. Axel got a bunch of shout outs. He finally shows up, dude. Thanks for showing up, Axel. He was at SmackDown. It's like Beetlejuice. Was he at SmackDown tonight? He was at SmackDown. Just got oh. done watching SmackDown live oh. in Seattle. That's dope. Oh, I apologize, Axel. That's sick. Yeah. Say hi to the tribal chief. Hail to the chief. Anyway, uh, Britt, um, what your your uh, player situation you're nervous about? I'm terrified about J.K. Dobbins and the entire Ravens backfield. I know that I've been touting J.K. Dobbins because we've been hearing that he's going to be ready to go for week one. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's been a whole year since his ACL. Like, why would he not be ready to go? You know, it wasn't like a complicated ACL. He's been working out. You saw what he did with his trainer. Why would he not go? And then all of a sudden, the past two weeks, it's like, oh, well, he's day to day. He might not be out there, blah, 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 blah. And as soon as Kenyon Drake gets released, they immediately snatch him up, making me think that he is not ready to go. And then you have this whole backfield conundrum between Kenyon Drake and Mike Davis. It's just disgusting and it's terrible. And I'm personally way too overexposed to J.K. Dobbins. I'm super nervous. And I think even if he is ready to go, they're going to hold him out of week one. They're playing the Jets. They're not going to risk aggravating at week one. So I don't think he's going to play. 
That really puts me in a huge bind on a ton of my fantasy teams, and I just don't like it. Since you mentioned Mike Davis. Expired. 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 And also, let's double down on Mike Davis. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Uh, J.B. Barry buried under the floorboards. Yeah, he the the rubble is it's gonna be too much for him. Yeah, yeah, Mike Davis, um, is disgusting as that sounds. Might actually be kind of playable, kind of. I mean, they uh, I've heard Kenny Drake might be the guy too. So, but that that should tell you it's so up in the air that I want no part of the. Ra- it's funny because it's gonna have so much volume no matter how they split it up, but you can't. You can't trust any part of that right now. So persona non grata. I want no part of that Ravens backfield, at least in week one. 4,400 going against a team. They should be blowing out. I need, I need, Mike Davis is in my DK lineups. I can't help it. Well, draft DFS is a little bit different than. Totally. You know, I get well, you, you crazy. So dude, so you have Mike Davis and Damian Pierce in your lineup. So you can start. Every, every other spot you have Travis Kelsey and so you have like Justin Jefferson who gets locked down by Jair Alexander. Start whoever you want, dude. Yeah, it's 4,400 bucks. I'll take that. Starting running back, can't be beat. Wow. But yes, that's DFS. Screw that. Screw all that other stuff. I was going to put Kenny Drake in one of my lineups <laughs> and then I, I switched to Mr. Amir Abdullah just to see. But I feel like they're the exact same play this week. If oh, like Carrie, yeah. if you're putting, if you're putting Mike, da- who is it? You're putting Mike Davis and Damian Pierce in your lineup. You said, well, I said I'm not. Uh, oh no, I'm not putting any Mike Damian Pierce. Hell no. Oh, because I was going to say this. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> no interest in Damian Pierce. <laughs> okay, I thought you said you did like him in DFS. I was earlier saying that I feel like a lot of people would be off of it because of the defense that they're going up against, but because Shaquille Leonard's out, that he might have some room to run a little bit more than usual. That was all. I didn't even. I have no idea what their dollar value is. I the, was just saying, the artist, a lot of people for, might be off of it. The artist formerly known as Darius Leonard. I was trying to think of his real name all day. It, yes, it is Shaquille is his real name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I looked at that. It, Leonard's his middle name. All I have to say is that Gary got dangerously close to being kicked out of Lightning House with that take if he was going to start Damian Pierce in his DFS lineup. No, I didn't even look at him. I I have no idea how much (laughs) he even is. I've been scrolling that because I finally somehow figured out a way to bypass like the the IP restrictions, the fact that I live in Washington. I have three lineups submitted. This is super weird, but I'm just going to keep going. How are you doing it, dude? It keeps telling me we can't submit this lineup, and then I hit submit, and it says thank you. (laughs) Yeah, and then they take your money, but then when they win, they're just like, oh, by the way, that was a legal lineup. I'm just doing all these free ones just because, like, hey, if they're free, at least I can get a taste. That's true, dude. Oh, that's probably why they let you. Traveling out to international waters. to to Yeah, right. He's got to sail out in a dinghy. It's like me crossing over into Oklahoma to put in college football lineups. Puget, Puget Sound. Is that where you are? No, oh, man. I'm right above Portland. Puget sounds like all the way up where Seattle is. I'm not from the two cities I know in, in Washington are where I live and Seattle. I'm out, of here. <laughs> I'm out of here, dude. Keep good. All right. Anyway, um, so we'll hit these really, really, really quick and then we'll be out because we're approaching the hour mark here. One question that we want answered about our player situation we can round table this. So, uh, Coop Loop. Uh, what about you? Jaguars. I want to know who the, the top target is on the team. I'm rooting for Evan Ingram, but I'm willing to pick up anyone who's playing a full snap share and getting targets. So there's probably going to be two wide receivers, at least getting a full snap share. And then one, uh, one tight. I'm hoping it's Ingram. If it's Zay Jones, I'll pick up Zay Jones. If it's Marvin Jones, I'll pick up Marvin Jones. I don't care who it is, but there's huge opportunity there. It's a new, new coach, new system. Christian Kirk's new to the team. Zay Jones new to the team. Like all these, Evan Ingram's new to the team. It's very similar to the Panthers a couple years ago when it could have been. Everyone thought it was DJ Moore, but then it was kind of Robbie Anderson and also Curtis Samuel was getting a bunch of carries. Like who knows? So like it's fun. So I, wh- whoever it is, I'm willing to drop the fab on them, baby. I feel like Trevor Lawrence was left for dead this year, and we forget the difference it has having an adult in the room and actually keeping. I, it just. Stuff sane. Urban Meyer 
<laughs> is just a stain on the NFL. And he was the worst NFL coach, I, I think, in history. There will be a 30 for 30, and everyone will just enjoy Whoa, watching. whoa. That's, you're giving a lot of credit to Bobby Petrino. Um, let's not talk about Bobby Petrino because <laughs> I will tell you that Chad Morris was a way worse coach than Bobby Petrino. At least in Bobby the NFL? Petrino won. I'm talking about Arkansas. You ripped a oh. bandaid off of me for an Arkansas Sorry. coach. This is, this is something that we will talk about privately in another chat. I'll tell you all the tea, but <laughs> I need that tea. Oh boy. That's getting me, spicy over here. Give me the tea Oh, real quick before we. Before we go back to rapid fire, pick one. Go. Sutton. Sutton. 100 percent Sutton. Boom. Yeah. All right. Next. All right. Ooh, Next but up. Gary. But Gary. I said, yeah, I said Sutton. I I'm so high on him. Mitchell, Mitchell with his injury. I think that everybody's crazy that Shanahan's a pain in the ass. I think that that they've just been injured. And then this is the year where he's actually just gonna be like, Oh yeah, let's do running back carousel so that we can keep everybody healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could. Oh, I for one can't wait for Jordan Mason in week five to be the Niners starter. Go on. Um, you're drunk. I'm already home. Good jokes on you. Uh so yeah, since you're spouting off at the hip there, Gary, who's your uh what question do you want answered uh in, in week one? So we'll go to the Niners uh running game coordinator for five years, and that's Mike McDaniels and his uh Miami Dolphins. And again, Coop is looking for the targets. I'm looking at the breakdown. We we don't know how Edmonds and Moster are going to split this backfield. Who's going to get the goal line looks? Who's going to get the pass catching work? We expect that Edmonds will get a lot of that, but Moster is so good. And they added Teron Armstead uh, from the Saints. So that line should be good. We've seen them uh, pump some high picks into that offensive line. And then we have Tyreek, uh, Tyreek Hill with, with Jalen Waddle with Tua. And what's that going to look like? And how is this all going to merge together under his first time coach? Uh, with with Mike McDaniels, and I love the fact that we get to see them going up against the Patriots week one. We know that they can scheme really well, and the Dolphins are officially no longer a team where you can scheme someone out because they have so many pieces. So let's go against good defense and see what can actually happen here. I, I love all four of them, Tyreek, Waddle, Edmonds, and Mostert, all for their values. So I'm excited to see what happens and want to know how things are going to be distributed, or is it just going to be even across the board? Yeah, I'm very excited about I uh, Dwayne McFarland uh, was on Sirius today uh, with Kendall Valenzuela talking about the, how he thinks the Dolphins and I quote will blow the doors off of the Patriots this week. Yeah. Just the uh, fact. That... Yeah, that was just. Yeah, who? Excuse you, that Britt. Was something. <laughs> no, they won't. Yeah, they that won't. was something. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the I Patriots could, I could do see have it. so many question marks, and then the Dolphins are like fairly cohesive at this point. But like, who knows? Well, I mean, the Patriots are probably Bill Belichick. Patriots have the best coach of all time and the second best quarterback of all time. You just don't it know might be that. the explosive team in NFL history next a to boy, a boy named McCorkle. I want to see Matt Patricia fired in the next ten days. That'd be cool. It'll yeah, probably who's, happen. Who's the best? Who even is the best player on the Patriots? It's like David Andrews, Ramondre like, Stevenson. Richards aren't even good. Um, Hunter probably, Henry, guys. It's probably on. Matt. It's probably uh, Matt. Yeah. But realistic, Kyle Van Noy. Realistic answer is probably Matt <laughs> Judon. Matt Judon is probably the best player. I mean, maybe. maybe. Could make a case for. No, you couldn't. Didn't, didn't they cut Slater? And he was pretty much always their best. player. No one's cutting <laughs> Slater, dude. Slater. I thought, so I thought he was. Cut. Slater's getting his jersey retired. Yeah, oh, excuse me, retired, not sorry, retired, not cut. Apologies. He's gonna be in the Hall of Fame, dude. <laughs> retired, not expired. Um, Brett, dude, best, best, best coin, best coin tossman in the league. <laughs> coin tossman. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> Is Brett, that a crush, designation? He crushes oh the coin toss, bro. He crushes the so, coin toss. You guys are in coin toss leagues. I'm. Yeah, it's me and Gary, but been <laughs> dynasty, dynasty coin toss league, dude. Matthew Slater, first overall pick. One on one, dear lord. Eat it. Hey, Brett. All right, so I'm. Bills would have beat I'm the gonna... Chiefs if they had Slater. Just saying. Overtime game. I'm... Can I? <laughs> uh, uh, is this my internet, or is this just me getting interrupted constantly? Like I don't know. I think it's the um, I muted them both. Um. So I'm gonna double dip here because I think that both of these teams have similar situations. 
I just want to know how that wide receiver distribution is going to go in both Kansas City and in Green Bay. I don't know really anything because so many things changed on both teams. And I, they're both so ambiguous that I have no idea. So I'm excited to see a little bit of how this is going to happen. And then you have Patrick Mahomes coming out and saying, I apologize in advance to fantasy managers because it's going to be a different guy every week. Like, what? What do you mean? Like, shut up. I, I just, it's something that I need to see because we all have no <laughs> earthly idea. So, yeah. that's something I'm interested in. I think he's just coming back at you, Britt, because you said not to draft him. He saw I your art. Not to draft him. I said, he's... don't draft him at ADP. Don't draft him at two. He was going at two overall at the time of your article. Let us make let's make that clear. But he saw your article for sure, and he was like, "I got some news for you, fantasy gamers." Brit took it personally. Brit, I'm pretty particular. good at making people take stuff personally. What do you guys think of the juju knee stuff? That it definitely sounds like there is there is some, I don't know, smoke some fire of Juju's knee, and maybe that's just part of it. Like they are gonna have obviously Kelsey's gonna be a mainstay, but then. Juju Sky and MBS, they I feel like they all play relatively different roles within the offense. So I can see that he's like, Yeah, we're gonna game plan around what we need to because we're no longer just gonna be doing Hill and Kelsey. We're gonna be mixing it up. And that brings me back to Juju's knee of is if he's even gonna be able to play the whole time and if if they know anything like that. But I guess that sounds a little bit more cynical than it probably or skeptical than it should be. Dude, no, I'm I don't sorry. think it's skeptical at all. I'm starting to wonder why the Chiefs are like the odds on favorite to win that division still. Like, why isn't it the Chargers? Why isn't it the Broncos? Like, even the Raiders are the Raiders have a bad offensive line, which yeah. In the fantasy world, we like to do a little thing called not care about the offensive line. But it does end up <laughs> that being is pretty, true. <laughs> it does pretty it does end up being pretty important at the end of the day. True and yeah, that's pretty true. Chiefs have the best no line. They do. Uh they got yeah, out of that group. They got that snot blowing kid, Creed Humphrey. That's yeah, the dude kid. that <laughs> there is nobody that looks more like a Creed Humphrey than Creed Humphrey. Yeah, he looks like he, he looks like he crawled out from a bridge under a bridge somewhere, just laying pancake blocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just speak on Green Bay specifically. Alan Lazard is doubtful for week one, so that, that opens the door for Super Chalk Sammy Watkins and DFS and everybody and their mother chasing that. Week one, carrot on a stick. Uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition. But this has been the Alan Lazard argument the entire time where there's literally eight people on this offense that could lead Green Bay in targets this year. I mean, all the way down to like Tunyon. and even AJ Dillon has a non-zero chance to lead this team in targets just based on his progression. So why take the most expensive option, you know, at cost, cost adjusted when you could take, you know, obviously Romeo Dubs was jumping up in ADP and, um, you know, obviously Aaron Jones has been a second round pick even in the third round, but uh, my husband must be uh, a little tipsy outside, right now. As, as Andrew absolutely. Cooper would say, yeah. Outside his mind. Yeah, did you absolutely. did you say did you say week one Sammy Chalkins? Is that what you Ooh. said? I thought is that what you said? I thought that's what you said Sammy at the beginning. Chalkins. I did not, but I'll maybe I did and I'll take week one, for it right Did now. you say oh chalk Sammy Watkins? I thought you said week one Sammy Chalkins. I was like, damn, chalk Sammy what, Watkins, but I mean, Sammy Chalkins. It. We'll attribute that to you because that's what I heard. I'll allow it. <laughs> Sammy uh, Chalkins. You gotta get him in a lineup now. Sellers, sellers ain't crazy, baby. I do have a DFS lineup going against uh, our boy Jameson Tyon, so nice. might have to throw him in there. Gary, yeah, you're in the, how, Gary have... how are you in the chat? I can never get my chat to work. We'll figure it. That's te- that's a tech question, dude. I have I have the fantasy alarm and uh, the lightning round streams open every time that I. So I can like talk to whoever's like I can see it oh. because I don't log Maybe in anymore. Sneaky boy. I'm not a part of this officially. Yeah, people wait. People will play dubs. I will be playing Aaron Jones. Aaron, yeah, I have a lineup 100%. where I have Aaron Jones and Dylan together. That's Ooh. how unconfident I am in that Packers receiving core. Yeah, I am very non-confident, and I will uh, regale you all with the question that I want answered uh, in Week One, which is the Raiders' backfield. 
Um, I did get auto drafted Josh Jacobs in the last league because I, not gonna lie, I forgot about it today when I was doing my stuff. But um, so that brings my backfield both uh, the auto drafted connection of Ezekiel Elliott and Josh Jacobs. So that should be fun to root for. Um, but yeah, I want to know how that's going to shake out between, you know, we know the Erhart Perkins system and the Hufflepuff Gryffindor system is alive and well in Las Vegas. Um, jo- uh, Gary is a wizard. Absolutely. And not a, not a Washington wizard. Well, what, which house would Gary be sorted into? A Hufflepuff. He's, I was going to say Hufflepuff. Ah, no, nah, he's a Gryffindor for sure. He's Hufflepuff. A heart, he's, he's a heart like a lion. <laughs> That cliff, dude, someone clip Gary saying Hufflepuff. <laughs> Have you ever had a dream that... I just wanted a reason <laughs> to play that. Oh, my and, uh, Lord. I, every time I've done one of those those tests, I get Slytherin. Every time. And my Patronus is a hyena. I mean, those kids are from Boston. Therefore, you that does not surprise me whatsoever. Yeah, my wand is sick. Anyway, so... So Zamir White, Josh Jacobs, Amir Abdullah, Brandon Bolden. Uh, I want to know, are they all going to get like four carries? And then Amir Abdullah gets like two catches. And then everything else goes through Devontae Adams and Waller and Renfro and renders the uh, backfield pretty much obsolete. I want to know what happens. Um, But Josh Jacobs still sucks. So So I I have a question about Amir Abdullah. Like I... I didn't yes, realize that, that is Bolden the was, was number two on the depth chart. Not that that like means a ton, but given the McDaniels thing, does that give you any pause to to start Abdullah? I, I, obviously, we're talking very deep and or zero RB or like Kevin. So I am starting him in Scott Fishbowl. I know you are because I am also. <laughs> I picked up both because my of starting running backs <laughs> off of waivers in the first waiver on the Scott Fishbowl. Him and Burkhead are my starting running backs this week. And yes, I I have some concern, but when you're this deep in the weeds and your other option is Ronald Jones, you kind of got to roll with it. Dude, you opened up a can of worms with this commenting (laughs) situation. (laughs) (laughs) Also, we've been podcasting for an hour and I've been commenting since second one and you just realized that. I know. I just realized. Yeah. And we've got podcasting for over an hour. I think we've talked about football for like 10 minutes. (laughs) We are our own. We are our biggest fans, clearly, because all we're doing while we're podcasting is commenting on our. Yeah, on we gotta our get show out of here. As we gotta ourselves. get out. Of here. All right, shut it down. Yeah, let's get on. Let's get on out of here. Um, <laughs> uh, off the rails. One more thing, sellers. Amir White is a sneaky DFS play. Um, you can sneak on out of here because I don't think so. Sorry, Brett. Tell your tell your husband I said that. I have him in but, like one or two lineups, but. Sellers knows he's crazy. Well, he knows, but you know he bring he brings it back with the Gabe Davis love. So he's right about about Gabe Davis. Let's see what else he's right about, dude. He's he's the hype machine now. He's the really is. He is the hype squad. Hype squad captain. He really is. All right, we're uh, not out of here. Uh, We will be back next week. uh, Our normal time Wednesday, eight thirty Central Time. What is? Oh my God! That does look like dude. That looks like a Quidditch, jer- it's Quidditch a Quidditch jersey. It's a Harry Potter sweater. It's my wife's, but <laughs> Ew. it looks like Ew, the wife. beginning part of Tommy Boy when he's in college. That's what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my Before he crashes through the yeah. table, and then he got a D plus. <laughs> Gary, uh, oh my God! We got to do more Friday shows because off this the rails. Is- Guys, I got a football game to go to tomorrow. I got to be yeah. at the tailgate at 7 a.m., y'all. All right, I, y'all. <laughs> bro, I, I was on the radio this First morning at 7 a.m., dude. My brain doesn't even work, dude. You guys, Talking I have to be getting drunk at Potter. 7 a.m. tomorrow. What the hell? <laughs> Why do you think I'm representing? It's the SEC home opener. Like, you got to get ready. I just am Gary, permanently Gary streaming. Got her. Dude. I'm, like, t- terminally online now. Sh- shut it off. All right. I'm shutting it off. <laughs> We will see you next week, Wednesday. Uh, like and subscribe to our video. Tell your friends. We want to get up to a thousand uh, subs so we can make no money on this podcast. Yeah, what's up? So if you haven't hit the like button, go do it right now. We love it. And I and will use promo come alarm everywhere. Everywhere, dude. Prize picks. 
uh, not on Yahoo actually anymore, but on <laughs> on your dog, Benny Hanna, uh, Benny Hanna, Chipotle. Just throw it out there. I mean, like, do like Fred Fred think strike about, leading. Think about how alarm. Think about promo how promo codes work though. You type the code in, and it's not like they penalize you. Like it just says you don't get anything. So just you might as well type alarm in wherever you go, especially fantasy football sites. We have deals with like all of them. Right, like monkey knife fight. We're definitely on there. So just toss an alarm in there, see what happens. Exactly. I tried to do that at Dame Buster's. Did it work? I guess I guess it did because I'm still here. So we got this. That is true. We got lightning. Lightning. That is true. The mascot. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you Wednesday. Uh, Good luck in week one. We'll talk about week two. And the what happened in week one, I suppose, we'll brush up on that. But uh, until next week, for Britt, for Gary, for Lightning, for Andrew Cooper, I'm Kevin Tompkins. Why don't you, Gary, 